There's a device that I've been using called a Whoop. Hello, and welcome back to iGal4. It's time for weekly challenge number 13, HQ Prop Presents, FPV Skittles Pro Whooper. Hey iGowers, it's me, FPV Skittles, aka the original Dan. I gave the other Dans the week off because they'll be plenty busy while I'm road tripping from West Coast Throwdown to Woodstopia in the next couple weeks. I also wanted to be here to explain this week's challenge because it is one of my favorite iGow challenges every season, and it also gives me a chance to introduce one of my new sponsors, HQ Prop. HQ Prop has sponsored iGow for the last three seasons, but they just recently became my personal propeller sponsor and I couldn't be more happy with them. HQ Prop makes my favorite 31mm Whoop props, and I ran them on all my builds long before I was an HQ Prop sponsored pilot. They continue to lead the way in propeller innovation with their new lightweight prototype Whoop props. I can honestly say that I have never changed just one thing on a build before that had such a massive impact on the performance. When I first tried the new HQ prototype props, it felt like I'd put my Whoop on uh, NOS or turbocharge it in some way. It was so much faster and more maneuverable and also more efficient which led to 30 to 60 more seconds of flight time. Just incredible. And I just recently tried the even newer prototype which is even lighter and it was another significant upgrade over the previous prototype. I can't wait for all these props to become public so everyone can improve their per performance on their whoops. Uh, HQ Prop is also working on lightweight prototypes for all the other common Whoop propeller sizes like 40 and 45 millimeters. So I'm super excited to try those. I've also recently got into racing bigger drones and I run HQ Props on all my builds. R36s for my open class 5 inch racers. Thanks for the suggestion, Daylight. S3s on my freestyle builds. R38s on my Freedom Spec and 7x4x3s on my Street League. They all perform great and are super durable. So, shout out to Zong and the HQ Prop team for supporting iGao and myself and continuing to innovate and improve the hobby. Okay, now let's go over the requirements for weekly challenge number 13, HQ Prop presents FPV Skittles Pro Whooper. So as you may have already figured out from the challenge title and artwork, this challenge is like a run in the video game Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Your objective is to complete trick obstacles, that are just combinations of tricks and obstacles, in a way that will score as many points possible during a 60 second run. Your total score will rank you versus all the other pilots that submitted videos and the exact number of passes will be determined by random draw at the beginning of the long stream review. You will have to use some strategy if you want to get a high score because there is a combo activated 2 times multiplier and penalties for repeating tricks. So be sure to read the description and make sure you understand all the rules. Requirement number one is the obstacles. So there are eight total obstacles that you can use in your run and they are as follows. Obstacle number one is just open air or the same as not having any obstacle at all. Obstacle number two is your over-under obstacle, and this can literally be anything, anywhere, as long as you can fly both over and under it. Obstacle number three is a pole. So this is just something tall and pole-like that you can fly completely around. Obstacle number four we've used many times is the doorway obstacle, and that must have one side set on the ground. Obstacle number five is an iGao approved gate and you can set that gate anywhere you like. Obstacle number seven is the iGo approved cube gate and that can be set on the ground or raised up as much as one cube height like in week number 10 of iGo 4. And finally, obstacle number eight is the TGS or triple gate stack. And just like in week number nine of iGo 4, it's just three iGo approved gates stacked on top of one another. So you can set up all eight obstacles if, as, if you like, but you cannot have any duplicate obstacles. So you can't use two different gates. If you're gonna use a gate uh, for your tricks, you have to use the same gate every time. Uh, same with any of the other obstacles. 
and also you could not double use any of the obstacles. So if you have a TGS set up, you can't also then use that as, let's say, your gate obstacle or your doorway obstacle. If you use it as a TGS, then it has to stay as a TGS. Requirement number two is your best scoring run. So this is the main part of the challenge here, and you should see a link in the description below to all of the values for the trick obstacles. There are 150 different options, and they all have predetermined values. So to put together a high scoring run, you must show FPV DVR of your highest scoring 60 second run. You score points by attempting any of the 150 different trick obstacles and earning the set amount of points if you complete the trick correctly on the designated obstacle without any bumps or ground taps. If you successfully complete at least five trick obstacles in a row without any bumps or ground taps in between and score at least 13 points, you will activate a 2x multiplier and your next trick will be worth double the designated value. Think of the uh, multiplier as a power-up or special ability bar in a video game. To activate it, you must complete a clean combo with at least 5 tricks that scores at least 13 total points. You need both of these factors to trigger the multiplier. So let's say if you just did 3 tricks that added up to 13 points, that still wouldn't yet multiply or activate the multiplier until you did 2 more tricks. Uh, also, let's say you did five tricks in a row and they were all clean, but the, you didn't get the 13 total points. You could continue to add on more tricks to get the total up to 13 points, and then once you did, the multiplier would then be activated. After the multiplier is used, it resets and another combo can then be started, but the multiplied trick obstacle does not count as a part of the new combo. You must begin your run landed and disarmed. Your 60 second run timer starts when you arm and then ends exactly 60 seconds later. At the end of your run, you are allowed to finish any trick that you started before the 60 second timer ended. If you bump into anything, tap the ground, or crash while attempting a trick, you do not get any points for that trick obstacle and you reset your combo multiplier. But this does not have to be the end of your run. You can get back up and continue to try the trick again or you can move on to a new trick obstacle and continue to score points. If you bump into anything or crash in between tricks, then you don't lose any points, but you do reset your combo multiplier. You cannot repeat any exact trick obstacles during your run. If you do the same trick obstacle a second time during your run, it will count for zero points the second time and it will reset your combo multiplier. Also, you cannot use the same obstacle twice in a row. If you violate this rule, your second trick on the obstacle will count for zero points and it would reset your combo multiplier. You are allowed to repeat specific tricks on different obstacles, but your trick obstacle point value will be cut in half each time you repeat a specific trick. So for the first use of a trick, you get 100% of the points. The second time you use it, you're only going to get 50% of the points. The third time, you get 25% of the total points. And the fourth time, you get zero points. So, if you do a power loop of yourself, and then a power loop of a gate, the gate will be worth 50%, and then a power loop of the cube, that would be worth 25%, and then if you went for a power loop of the TGS, it would be worth zero points because you've already used three power loops. Hope that makes sense. And finally, I ask that you please turn on an OSD timer if at all possible. If you don't have an OSD, please provide some other means to show that your timing is accurate. You are not allowed to speed up your footage in any way, whether it be the total overall speed or speeding up in between tricks is not allowed. And you're also not allowed to cut together different clips to form your 60 second run. It has to be one full clip. Uh, please do not try to cheat in any way. If you do, like always, you will be immediately whooped out from iGAO 4. Requirement number three is that you must have all of the names, numbers, and point values for the tricks that you are attempting on screen during your run. So ideally, they'll be like on a list on the side with your score, 
but if for some reason that's too hard for you to edit, please at least put the list with the names, numbers, and values of the tricks you're attempting in your video description. You can add up your score, but that's not necessarily going to be your final score. I will double check and score the runs during the live stream. Alright everyone, now that we know all the requirements, let's go to a clip of me outside doing kind of a bare minimum run that should hopefully show off some of the scoring requirements. You've got 90 seconds for your video this week and the run can only be a maximum of 60 seconds, so it'd be pretty cool to see some edits where you're kind of making it look like a video game. Okay, so I'm here in the front yard to do an example run of weekly challenge number 13 HQ Prop Presents, FPV Skittles Pro Whooper. Alright, so I've got a bunch of the obstacles set up. we got a cube gate, like week number 10. we got a regular gate in the tree. we got a wire obstacle as the any size over under. I'll be standing here as the self gate. Of course, there's all the open air that's always there as another obstacle. So that's what, five different options for us to play with here in this combo? Let's try to get a basic combo scoring enough to get the multiplier and then score decently on the multiplier and then from there let's just try to tack on a few more points afterwards and see what we can get. Alright, so you have to start uh, disarmed and landed. It doesn't have to be on the ground but you have to be disarmed and landed and your time starts when you arm. So my first trick, 360 yaw, straight into self-power loop, go into the cube, Roll the cube, open air Rubik's, split us of the cube, Maddie flip the wires, flip the gate, and that should give us the bonus multiplier now. Let's go for a Karuri of the wires. Alright, nice Karuri. Uh, let's go for a 540 split us of the cube. Alright, let's go for an open air Rubik or Cubix. Alright, and we've got a little time left. Let's go half Matty Pendulum on any size over under. Alright, there it is. And we got to finish that last trick because we started it before the uh, 60 second timer ended. So let's add that up and see what it scored. Alright everyone, I hope you have fun with this challenge. Uh, I always really enjoyed the Tony Hawk video game format and I really wanted to have an FPV sim freestyle game where you could do basically the same thing go around and score points, maybe like collect items and stuff too, but haven't found someone that can put that together for me. So if you know someone, have them get in touch with me. Anyway, my advice for trying to get a high score this week is to try to do tricks that are worth a lot of points but don't take up too much time. Also, make sure you uh, get as many multipliers as you can squeeze in in the 60 second time period, and then obviously when you have the multiplier, do the highest trick value possible so you get two times a high value. Then finally, remember that you can complete any tricks that you start before the 60 second timer ends. So be sure to use that to your advantage when you choose the tricks that you're doing. All right, everyone. Good luck and happy whooping. I'm tired of trying to pretend like I can do it on my own. When in the end, I'm sick and tired of feeling alone. I wish there was a way that you could read my mind. I say I'm fine because yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine.